Hello from SlideNerd and hello from Waves. In the last video, I was talking about inter-fragment communication design patterns with the help of an example in Android Studio. In this video, I'm going to continue that. So going back to our main activity here, there is nothing as you guys notice. In the XML of the main activity, we have added the two fragments, right? Going to our fragment A, which contains a button, it handles onclick method through the view.onclick listener where I increment the counter every time the button is clicked, which begins at zero. Same way with fragment B, I have a text view. I initialize the text view inside the on activity created, and I try to change the contents of the text view inside a separate method. Now, to link everything together, I'm gonna go to the package, right click, new, create a class, make its type as interface, call it communicator. This is gonna help us communicate between the fragment and the activity so click ok inside this i will have a method which says public void respond with string data now you guys are probably wondering saying why the hell did i put this method and why does it have this parameter don't worry i'll go to our activity try to implement this interface by saying implements so now that i have said that i have to override that method right i press alt enter implement methods click ok and here i'll i will get notified when someone triggers this respond method so now the question is how to trigger this method and that is going to be done by fragment A. Every time the user clicks on the button, on click will be called and here is where we trigger that event. For that, I'll create an interface variable by saying communicator. An interface reference variable can refer to a subclass object. This is a major Java property for dynamic runtime polymorphism. So I'm going to use that property here. And I'm gonna say com equals to get activity. Get activity returns a reference to main activity, and I'm trying to initialize that reference to com, and this is possible only if the activity implements the interface, which means the activity is a subclass of the interface. So on the left side, I have an interface variable. On the right side, I have a subclass object that implements that interface. Press comma, perform the type casting, and we are done. So now notice very carefully. In the onClick method, I'm going to fire the event by saying com dot respond, and then I'm going to say the button counter times. So every time the user clicks on the button, counter is incremented. This superclass or interface reference variable is actually pointing to a subclass object which has been initialized. This is going to say com dot respond. Now this respond. You're probably saying, where is it? This respond is inside your main activity. That the reason is com com is pointing to our main activity over here. So when you say com dot respond, it's gonna call the respond method in the main activity, right? So inside this method, that data from fragment A has been passed over here to this string data parameter. So inside this, I can directly get a reference to fragment two, and I'm done. So I'm gonna find fragment two by saying fragment manager manager equals to get fragment manager and then I can say manager dot find fragment by ID. Now if you guys remember inside our activities layout which is activity underscore main dot XML I have the second fragment whose ID is at the rate ID fragment two. So I'm gonna get this here by saying find fragment by ID r dot ID dot fragment two. And then that is gonna give me a reference to fragment B. Fragment B, F2 equals to this. So I'm gonna perform the type casting by press Alt Enter and we're done. So now notice very carefully, I'm gonna say F2 change text and I'm gonna pass the same data, which means there is fragment A. I get the on click event, I increase the counter, I call the interface reference variable by saying com.respond. This data goes here to main activity inside the respond method. I get a reference to our second fragment and I say fragment 2 dot change text data and this goes to our fragment B over here and inside the change text method it actually changes the text view. You see how sophisticated a communication mechanism that is. So going back to fragment A there is one thing which we have not done and that is to set our listener by saying button dot set on click listener. So with all these steps completed everything is ready to be fired. So let's go and run this. So here my main activity is running. The two fragments are added in XML. I click on the button. On click gets triggered, which is going to have this counter being incremented. And in return, it's gonna call com.respond. The button was clicked, blah, blah, blah. Inside the main activity, 
it goes here to the respond method. I get a reference to the second fragment and I simply call change data on it and you guys can see things change. I click again, it says click two times, three times, four times and so on. So this is how simple fragment communication works. Now there is a more sophisticated example which you guys have seen on developer.android.com. There is a list fragment on the left side. The user selects one of the items and on the right side the data changes. Now this is the pattern used over there even for that example. But that being a pretty complex example for a beginner, you probably wondered how it worked. So I hope you guys have understood something out of this video. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel, comment, let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear from you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next vid. Have a nice day.